Yo, yo, my sovereigns, what up? This is Boba Fett, Uncensored on the Internet, with episode 32 of Splinterlands 101. Joining us again tonight as usual, co-host of the show, finest gentleman who ever lived, Matt Clark. Howdy, howdy. Here's Matt Clark. He's one of the finest gentlemen that ever lived. The Geo of the Geo Tricks. Geo Tricks. Howdy, <laughs> <laughs> and joining us tonight, another Melbourneian, just to totally surround Matt Clark there in the uh, in the southwest sort of of the screen in uh, the state of Brightwing. For those in the know, that's Adelaide. For those who don't know, so for a uh, fellow Melbourneian of the Republic of Danistan, welcome to the show, yes. Jagged. Thank you very much. It's good to see you guys almost in the flesh. Yeah. A bit live. Yeah. yeah. So you actually you actually edit in a Grody, does his own personal compliment of Matt every week. <laughs> <laughs> so don't give Matt any ideas. Yeah. Um, well, maybe we can get an uh, update there, Matt. Maybe uh, at next time that yeah. the town hall's on, just say, look, uh, um, you know, can can we expand on finest gentlemen and just you know? Mm. Yeah, so sorry, Bob. He's just a mere Aggie. Wait, just look. It's not your turn, mate. I'm busy. <laughs> I, I'll call you whenever. Sorry. Uh, what were you saying? <laughs> uh, we've we've been chatting. Uh, Jag's been uh, commenting on on our post for a while, and uh, we invited him into the server, and we've been uh, yeah, we've been hitting things up and talking along, and it's uh. I would wanted to get him on the show, so here he is. And um, as I know, you've been watching the show, so you'd be aware we usually start off to find out you know, how people ended up on Splinterlands. Like, you know, where did you come from? Crypto, yeah. uh, blockchain. Well, but, but I don't know if you know Gregory Manorino, the um, financial pundit. No, never heard of him. No. Anyway, he he had a link on to Steambit, and he was pushing. Um, decentralized um social media hmm. and my friend was saying to me he goes you're posting on facebook and you get nothing for it why don't you spend your energy posting into something you can get some crypto on and, and different community and i went yeah i'll give it a whirl so i went through that whole steam it um scenario because it was very bare bones back then so yeah. the platform had no development there was no uh, peak d there was no the formatting was very um laborious and um yeah so went into there met um hive australia so got in there i think true girl at the time yes she got me into that and, and she was working on um i don't think it's uh pin map or i think it was um some other travel guide yeah steam it world map Actually, that's it yeah mm -hmm. so you know started getting into all that and um experiencing that uh mad rush of crypto going from I think I put in like four hundred dollars at that time. It was like a point two of a bitcoin, and it shot right up to like four thousand dollars almost. And then it just came tumbling down. <laughs> so I had that that whole um, uh, the peak and trough roller coaster of what crypto investing entails. That you mm -hmm. you just basically got to enjoy that um, massive gust of wind and the massive drop back down. So then. Um, it was a bit of a hiatus. Uh, when Steam Monsters came about, I, I think I've got an account. I have no idea how to get into it under um, Jagged. And, um, and, and it just looked very, very clunky, same as how um, Steam was. So there was no actual, I, I went, nah, not for me. Life got busy um, and just left it. And, and then fast forward a few years, circumstances have changed, started tipping your toe back into crypto and then you got back into that gust of wind where it just all the old crypto i had just zoomed back up and i bought a, a few um shit coins is that um good terminology and mm -hmm. they just flew up and i went oh wow i'm gonna make sure i don't come crashing down like i did in 2016 yeah. and so I, every time i doubled I'd, I'd sell so then it was like you know i had things in like um dent and hollow and these ones that were like a fraction of a cent mm -hmm. and and then from there it was like okay well this, this is fun but always keep in mind that it's going to come down at any point and all the the youngins that were coming in 
they saw the success I was having. They were jumping on board and I'm telling them, sell every time you double your money or you get a, a re decent um, profit, bring some back home because it can be gone, you know, and you know, people are buying the top end coins. And I'm thinking, no, nah, no, nah, you, you've got to be very, a um, uh, bit more strategic and a bit more um, long, uh, understand that there's no real long, long term apart from holding on to what you have. You know, so where, where you, if you're playing, I think it was, um, is it George that was on, and he was saying he, he wants to play with his profits? Was it, I can't remember which uh, guest you had. Was it the last one or the one before? Yeah, the one before. The trade-off? Uh, yeah. Um, that was another Andrew, wasn't it? We've had two Andrews on yeah, in the last it was couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, and, and it's, oh, I resonate with that very much because I, I wanted to take my money out and just play with, with what I had left over. Yeah, and then from the there, I'm money, going, as he put it. Mm. Yeah, and and that's yeah. the attraction with um, Splinterlands is, is that the coins that you're dealing with aren't expensive, and already have had Hive co coin, so it's a very easy transition to get into Splinterlands. So you're looking at like you know, deck is is you know pretty much um, under under zero uh, un, under one cent easily. Uh, SPS is a good versatile coin, and then um, Hive is a good backbone. And uh, I, I very much enjoy that. And, and I've always liked card games like Magic, um, uh, Flesh and Blood and Pokemon. Those type of cards are great. But physically, you end up with so much junk sitting at home. Oh, yeah. And I haven't got a big house. So I don't want to have boxes of, of things. And, and having a virtual one where your, um, your common cards can be consolidated to make a better version of the common card, which your physical card doesn't have that um, opportunity. And and they're the things where you, you know, then that's where I re really looked at, you know, what's Holazor doing and Galen and his uh, cousin Tara. And um, and then, you know, Matt's always been a quiet guy floating along. He's, he's in the scene everywhere, but he doesn't want to be the forefront of the scene, which I always found um, good. Because he, he, I remember back in the day, he was there. And then when I, all my um, SPS that I lost, you made a little comment. And then I was like, ah, he, yeah, you're still around. So, yeah, <laughs> so those type of things are, are, are pretty cool. Yeah. 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 It's, it takes the bear market, doesn't it, to find out, like, who's real. Um, yeah. Back in the Steam It days, um, I was vlogging on DTube at the time, and I was in this Discord server called DTube Daily. And the whole idea of it was that we made a video a day. And yeah. uh, because we were, what we were doing – um and we were chatting regularly with the, the devs and you know, Hyman Danger and all that. So we you know we we're in D Chief's favor. We we're getting regular upvotes, which were like 120 bucks at the time for you know a 15 minute video. And then all of a sudden everything started going down. And as the further down the price went, the more members just started disappearing. <laughs> you know? And then and when we're down to like under a, a dollar type thing, it was like there was like three or four people left and then it just, it just fell apart. And uh, then they had a bit of a, uh, a prolonged sort of pump. Um, a couple of faces started you know, making videos again, but then when it didn't hold and it went down again, they just disappeared again. Um, but I think that's just, that's, you know, the fiat mentality. You know, you, if you're earning crypto, you can't be counting its value in fiat because you know, if, if you're earning ten, like 10 steam or I like, say 10 hive now, if you're earning 10 hive, you know, whether it's a dollar or whether it's a hundred dollars, it's just a time factor. It's, it's 10 yeah. hive. So yeah. Correct. Um, Correct. Yeah. I think that's when you realize when crypto is broken through is when you're not, when you're not comparing it to a fiat that's in the, in the future where it'll be a Bitcoin will sustain its own convertibility into something that's not fear. So how much for a house or how much for a, a vehicle? And, and then that, that market will regulate itself. Because um, we all know that the, the fiat system is, is finished. I it's mean, exactly the right kind of attitude. It's ruined out the debt to the point where it's, um, there's no way they can repay it without causing massive economic devastation. Um, yep. That's when, when, I, you know, when I thought the, a, a pandemic coming through or, or a war would be the only way that would reset it. Because um, uh, that 
they, they need some sort of um, massive shake up Excuse. the world. Yeah, mm, in yeah. order for them to maintain their control and, and bring in a new system. And, Absolutely. You know, um, yeah, but that, that I see it the same way. I've got um, a few friends that are still, you know, you know, diehards into crypto. They they hold it no matter what, and as well as you know, precious metals and those type of things. Um, you know, we've been following that since 2016. Um, you know, it, it just with um, with the whole steam it when Justin's son came in, um, that was a, actually a blessing I think for the community because it it showed a, a, a massive break of, of a direction. And then the people who have moved into developing Hive, it's come, it goes leaps and bounds, I think, um, which, which if you look at most civilizations, they always end up having those, um, like a, a split and a rebirth and a split and a rebirth. Um, and, and it's those challenges that, that either make it survive or it'll, it'll just shrivel up and die. You know, it, it, was a, it was a great, <coughs> sorry, it was a great, great proof of concept. We'd always yep. said delegated proof of stake can fork if need be, and if we if there is a fifty one percent attack, we can do this. And then yep. it happened, and we did it. And yep. nobody liked doing it. Nobody liked having to do it. But we got rid of all of the baggage of the past. Well, most of the baggage. I still yep. think the Ninja Mind stake should have been left behind, but um, that's for <laughs> that's for a different a different conversation. Yep. But I think the fact that we demonstrated that it's possible, we did it, um, and now we're at the tail end of that. That's a message to anybody else who wants to come along with a fat stack of cash and say, I own you now, because yes. we can go, ah, you go, you go talk to old mate Justin there um, <laughs> and uh, let well, him know how, you know, ask him how that turns out. Well, you also, you don't hear that comparison anymore. In those early days, it was like, what's the steam at price versus Hive? <laughs> you don't hear that anymore. It's it's because all the new people that have come into Hive, they don't really know about that. Even though it's not that long ago in crypto uh, time it's it's a lifetime ago mm. it's um which is i think the um those of us that have been there from the beginning we have um that affection of for, for my journey is always um sporadic because i get sidetracked on things but my memory of the previous thing is it doesn't seem as long ago as it actually is whereas i see that you guys have been in it consistently through that whole period um, which is which is just amazing, it, and that what made it easier for me to come back in is that all these same faces I knew. It's like long lost friends that we we didn't really know each other, but I, you know, I, you know, I lurk, lurk. I'm a lurker, as you've labelled us, you know, and um, and not I do, anymore. And I've I changed you. You're, you're green now. You're a green guest. Yeah, I got to find a, find a role. Would be good at some point. That'd be great. Yeah. Ah. Ah. So yeah. So I even. Because I, I, I know that you take it quite seriously, this show. I made a little um, on my serviette here in the morning. Oh, I can't, you can't see it? No, you can't see it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, like a few talking points in case, you know, things come up. So, yeah, awesome. I, I really appreciate your show. I think it's um, it, it slots in beautifully, you know, almost, almost as impressive as a town hall. You're getting close. <laughs> um, but you know, those things are, are very important to, the, to this environment. And Splinterlands TV has been fantastic. Yeah. Um, again, it's a matter of um, rewarding the viewers in some way at some point and uh, allowing some engagement in, in different ways as well. So I know they have that, um, uh, you know, the, was it the, call it the cut of the week or the, what do you call it, the um, small clip of the week? I think, yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, clip of yeah. the week. You can, you can put that week, into yeah. the Splinterlands um, Discord. And you can people can win SPS and those mm. type of things, and you've got art competitions on other other um, hive posts within the uh, Splinterlands community, and all those little things they all add up to creating a depth beyond just the game. Exactly, um, which yeah. We, yeah, which I, I thoroughly enjoy, and, and this show is one of them. You know, well, thanks for that. I mean, it's no, yeah. it, we 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 have a blast making this, you know, yeah. uh, and it's good to know that. It's no, it's not just us coming on and having fun. That you know, there is actually uh, an audience that that's appreciating what we're doing as well. And I think a big takeaway from that whole hard fork thing is this: this whole journey is all about community. We couldn't have done the hard fork, the hive thing, without the community and the witnesses who are community based. Um, otherwise, it 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 could never have been done. So mm -hmm. that's what 
No, I mean, Hive has so many pluses going for it, but the fact that it's got this mobile plug-in community, um, I think is, is uh, I just think that's one, probably one of the best aspects of it. And also, yeah, no. on the topic of community, I think Splinterlands as a blockchain game has the most support of a community that I have seen. And I think ultimately it's us who drive the product around and tell people about it. And even if they, whatever they think, you know, that's, you know, that's a new point, uh, you know, that that's not relevant, but I mean, like us being able to um, spread the word, you know, like, you know, that's what we're doing. That's what we all doing. Uh but Everyone I'm actually, who does. I'm, I'm actually really concerned what backlash you've received, Geotrix, by sharing Splinterlands to people. What trauma well, have you gone through? I, I swear, I tell you, no, there's always backlash. Like, <laughs> I talk to people who play physical card games and they're like, yeah. what's the point of that? Why do you need that? <laughs> you know, I just, and I'm telling you, not many, a majority of like people who aren't into blockchain already find it hard to take on that information that they don't have the light bulb moment there's yeah. it's nothing there like i've spoken to many who play card games physical card games love you you know love pokemon love you know all of that and yeah it's just they're not interested it's like okay yeah. what will it take you know the or penny maybe. will drop eventually it's just a question of time uh, i've heard yeah. a saying a few times that i really resonate with um uh, you buy bitcoin at the price you deserve which i think yeah. is you know, uh, similar to, to you know, <laughs> um, uh, my thoughts on SPS, Dark Energy Crystals cards, you know, uh, if you recognise the value of this place. I mean, we, we talked to, to guests who deduced that this thing might exist when they were learning about blockchain, went, it'd be really good if there was this thing, and then they went out looking for it, and then they found it. And that's the type of person who deserves to be picking up these cheap reward cards, right? Others like ourselves, we're already on the chain, we heard about this game and went, yeah, all right, I'll give it a crack. So if, the sooner you recognise the value in this place, the more of it you're going to accumulate to, to, towards yourself and the more you deserve to. Yeah. Well, that, that was my other yeah. other rationale for getting into Splinterlands was I want crypt, crypto to be used as a functional coin. Like just having Bitcoin and say everyone's going, when people are just chasing it for a, particular, a potential wealth or an um, easy money thing, I don't resonate to that. I didn't get into crypto for that that side of things. It's a it's a bonus if it comes along. Hmm. So when you see that you can use your crypto to to be used in a gaming world, I which were, I think was the original use of crypto or the intention of crypto, it, it, it just like shows it. you a, a direct um, practical application of your coins. Yeah. yeah, and then you've got your NFTs that are now flourishing, which you can convert them into a card that's worth something with a, you know, a scarcity that's been manufactured, but it, it's actually, you're applying it into a, a digital world. Um, and, and from that, you can create economies and you can come up with ideas and, and you can um, use it, in, uh, morph it into the real world in some way um, by practicing in this, in this world. And, and that's what I like about it. Because, I, I, you know, I, I, he I hear about all these projects that they're going to use crypto on, but they always come to a... a uh, impasse when they have to convert it into the real, real world and then it just becomes basically a fiat um, vehicle and and then I see developers helping a project along and then somehow it gets taken into private business you know it, it that sense of um, uh, um, how, how do you hold it within a crypto world when someone can make easy money out of it once the idea has been developed and they, they take it and, and who owns it when it's decentralized um, I often think of, you know, like the Hawaiian landowners, you know, when um, uh, Zuckerberg went in and bought up strips of, you know, hundreds of miles of Hawaiian beaches. Mm -hmm. um, in the old days, it was owned by the, the tribe. But then when the uh, white man came in, they said, well, you have to have someone who owns it. So the head family just put their name on. So then all Zuckerberg had to do was <laughs> go to all those head families and get them to sign it over give them some money and the people lost their asset. Whereas in the old, in the more ancient times, it was, a, it was, a, there was no sense of um, owning property. It was a, it was a communal sense. And that's sometimes how the, 
the crypto lessons need to be learned. Like Justin's son came in, offered um, Dan, I think was it, or offered him um, some money for the ninja state. And all that decentralization, we've got protection, was, was taken away in front of us. And these are the things we need to um, mature in, in the system. And, and that's where Splinterlands provides that opportunity where if um, Agro and the team don't do things right, the community goes away. That, that sense of value is gone. And that's where that transparency, the communication, making sure that there's key holders that uh, aren't corruptible. Um, and and that, that's why I, I quite enjoy Splinterlands because it, it's, it's fun. It has an, a, multiple economies. You can be an investor, you can be a card owner, you can be a player, you can be a me you can be a media entrepreneur now, Bob. You can <laughs> um, you know, be a Rupert Murdoch of Splinterlands, you know, buy up all of the media. But this is the fantastic platform we have. Um, and I resonate a lot from the Dota, the Dota 2 world. I don't know if anyone's played Dota 2. No. Or, or League of Legends. Is heard of, uh, of obviously League of Legends, but I yeah. was never into any card games uh, prior. To, so I, I basically ditched Facebook a few years back. And then my friend Kurt, who'd been living in Mexico for a while, got deported from Mexico, sent back to Australia. And he just stayed a couple of weeks at my place while he was back. And he actually got, because I was off Facebook, disillusioned with all that. And he says, well, have you heard of Steam It? I was like, no, what's Steam It? Yeah. So he got me onto that. And that was a huge learning curve. That was my introduction to crypto. Uh, and then along comes um, you know, Steam Monsters. And that, I thought, well, I've got all this Steam that I, I don't know what to do with because I didn't even have an exchange, an account with an exchange. Okay. I had no idea what to do. Uh, so I just, I didn't know how to spend it. I didn't have a clue. I bought a hoodie off of one of the guys in uh, Tim Australia who set up one of those like you know, online stores and accepted Steam. Um, bought a couple of silver coins off Matt, and then along comes Steam Ones. Is like ah, something I can spend my Steam on. Um, oh, cool. So that was my introduction. Never got into card collectibles at all before. So yeah, yeah. Well, well, Dota Two was a was a uh, combat um, real time strategy game. It was, uh, and I got into that. I quite enjoyed that. And, and that had a, a great community and they have a thing called the, the International, you know, where they have teams from around the world competing, which I think um, hopefully um, uh, Splinterlands will get to that point where you have personalities in the top teams battling it out and people are willing to pay to watch it or to participate because um, they used to have a thing called a compendium, like a little virtual book. And in that you would have missions you'd have to do with your characters um, there'd be uh, collectible cards of the, the top players. Mm. So you get to know their background, what team they're on, or in our sense, it would be a guild. And then, um, it, and then for, I think it costs something like t uh, $10. But from that, you get um, skins for your characters. You get all sorts of things. And I can see great potential in that on Splinterlands where that's another level of virtual engagement where – yeah, you have like a, a week long um, brawl of the top teams um, and, and then generate like a prize pool. Because I think the prize pool of Dota went to something like um, $30 million was the oh, prize pool. So $2, I think $2.99 from every compendium sold went to top up the prize pool. And it wow. was the, I think, the highest paying game. It, I think it might even still be the highest paying game. Um, wow. Yeah, I've so, never, never heard of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but but it was a you know you had a bit of a toxic um, community because you're actually playing with people on the team based thing, you know. Um, but yeah, it was great great fun. But they ended up with economy issues because uh, that you could sell the item you got to, in the marketplace, and then somehow um, people were exploiting that. I'm not sure what the actual exploits were, but um, so then they had to put like um, uh, non transferable items. Or um, you could only sell it after three month, three month Let's period, and and that's where you end up. You see, with the bot issue in Splinterlands, you end up with, you know, how do you balance this economy um, to make it work? Because you don't want people coming in, winning some items, and then selling them on the market. 
So I, I'm intrigued by that side of things because I've seen what Dota 2 went through and I see the challenges coming up as as you brought in your player base. Um, you know, mm. where, where, how, do they, how do they overcome the issues that they have? Um, you know, and, and, they're very, and they're very responsive. Um, so I think is a crypto mancer, I think put a post on recently about how bots were exploiting by not putting an actual team in and then they win and then they they because you know the new uh, patch that was done that even if your opponent surrenders, you still gain um, points for that. And, that and so he's identified that that's a potential issue. Um, yeah, and then that'll be that'll be resolved and which is which is awesome. Because I think, I uh, Matt, that, you were yeah. saying positives about the bots last week. Is it having a yeah, bot environment? I, yeah. I, th I think it's just it's about accepting that this is true uh, and you, you don't want to be 10 years deep and everybody's got millions in the game and then some somebody <laughs> comes up with bots, right? You, it's much better for the game and the bots to grow alongside each other. And it's just like humans and viruses, right? We need to keep that immunity up by constant exposure. And then there's never that one big moment where they just rush in and, you know, take you completely because you've got no experience of the this virus or this sickness or whatever, you know, same with bots. One yeah. thing you were uh, mentioned there with Dota, uh, I've been spending a bit of time, um, sorry, Bob, but I've been spending a bit of time on Facebook um, and prowling around. And there's a lot of ads from uh, uh, Kotaku and, um, you know, the mouthpieces of the AAA game studios. And they're sledging NFTs. This guy lost his house. Uh, it's really bad. Uh, power, power usage, all of that. Like, and it's just this massive, massive sledge fest. And I thought, well, one analogy that I've spun up to use it to explain to a few people on, on Facebook, because I'm out there fighting the good fight, right? I'm, I'm waiting through Facebook so you don't have to, um, is imagine that right up until now, all cars, when you buy a car, you put your fingerprint on there and that's just your car now, right? And when you're finished with that car, you just got to wreck it, right? Because nobody else can have it. And then some startup company goes, oh, hey, we've invented this thing called a key. And when you're done with that car, you can actually sell it or give it away or whatever you like to somebody else. And then they can be the actual owner of that car. Now, imagine the mud that Toyota and Mitsubishi are going to sling at this new car company they're going to be talking about. Uh, you lose 20 grand as soon as you drive it off the lot. They're going to be saying, oh, this guy had his car stolen, right? He had it stolen. If you had a fingerprint, you, could, you know, you're not going to get your stuff stolen if it's, you know, fingerprints. But he, his car keys were stolen off his bench and then it's not even his car anymore. And it's just they're amping up the fear because they want to be your only source of cars. They don't want you to be able to buy and sell from each other. Um, and I think seen in those terms, if you imagine if that had always been like that, um, yeah, there would be people out there going, oh, I can't believe you suckers are, are buying these cars with keys. Not me. I know where it's at. And it's like, you're not informed. You just, you've been told what to think and now you think it. Mm. Yeah. I'm the thing, I'm at the point now is like, I mean, I don't watch TV. I haven't watched TV for 20 years. But when that, when you hear, I mean, you don't need to watch TV. You, hear, you just hear conversations, you find out what's going on. But yeah. if you just do the complete opposite of what they're trying to tell you to do on the TV, then you're going in the right direction. Um, yeah. yeah. 100%. Yeah. And, and look, there's, there's pitfalls along the way. You make mistakes. I see every, every mistake, particularly the financial ones, was a, a course that I didn't have to uh, take eight weeks to complete. <laughs> I, I, I learned it in an instant and, and it hurts and you learn your best lessons that way. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. A you know, cu couple of areas where I think Splinterlands could improve is that 5% fee when you deposit coins in game. I think that's a bit steep myself. I, I don't know what the um, costs are behind all of that that they experience, but I, I think that should come down because uh, other exchanges I use only charge 1% <laughs> on, on things. And particularly if you already have that coin, you know, or you, you're making it actually easy. There's no complication in the transaction, apart from them having to. I think is it split between Hive and the coin you want. Um, yeah. I think they use Hive. Hive is the the middleman between them. I'm not sure what fees are, are encountered, but I think when I see five percent, I'm like, oh wow, that's pretty steep. You know, um, from if you're only doing it with a small amount of money, um, I, I think that would be. It. But then you've got the 
the opposite end where you have the staking opportunity within within splinter lands which is improving that new format they have with that um, green gold screen where you can stake your coins and you can look mm. at the tribal decks from there pools yeah oh, i yeah, think that's pools. i don't know if it was there always but i've just noticed that with this the new um um screen that they've updated to um that looks brilliant i like that opportunity i've been dabbling a little bit with you know a couple of dollars in having a uh, sps um deck liquidity pool thing and because mm -hmm. I've, I've dealt with the um or was it auto market maker in coinex where you you pick the uh, same amount of say bitcoin and um sps and then you can earn you get a percentage of the fees that coinex earn so from from the fees that they get for the week uh, i think it's 60 percent get dis distributed to the liquidity pool and so on, on when a coin's very popular, I was making like $175 a day, uh, $50 a day, until mm. it becomes either the coin loses popularity or more people jump into the liquidity pool. And then you watch the returns go all the way down to like three cents. So you start thinking, you know, I'm going to be a millionaire <laughs> by the end of the year. But then you go, oh, well, three cents, you know, maybe a coffee will be, might, might get something <laughs> along those lines. But these are, these are the, again, another aspect of, of the crypto world that you don't get quite easily. Um, in the real world, it's a more, norm, normally a more um, rich man's type of mechanism, whereas you can do it um, pretty much with any amount that you have, which I think yeah. is good fun. Um, and again, it can pay if you, um, that, that's my dilemma now. That was one of my questions to Matt was, you know, because Matt's a whale, obviously, and you've got minnows like us. Um, I was saving some SPS to buy into the Rift, um, Rift Watchers. Mm -hmm. um or walkers or watches that's right watches yeah. watches yeah and 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 then as sps kept dropping and dropping and dropping i'm like well i might be able to get like five packs you know it's getting to the point where it's like the whales i think will gobble up those packs faster do you think it'll, they'll snap up um to the point where minnow should bait look for an, a different opportunity i to be honest i think sps is there's a lot of guys like myself uh, and substantially bigger, like uh, Neil McSpadden, Michael B, uh, who are very much interested in having the SPS rather than necessarily having the cards. So I think if SPS was to was to skyrocket and they figured it was unsustainable, if it hit the dollar, dollar fifty, something like that, and they look at the, we've still got another four and a half, five years to go of this, you know, uh, of the issue of this token, uh, but Rift watches won't be around for very long then I think you, you'll find it's going to get sold out. But the fewer packs you can afford to buy with your SPS, the yep. more chance you'll be able to get a chance to because uh, people aren't going to want to part with their SPS cheap. Um, okay. People with the long-term long view, uh, which is how you get to be a whale, is to take the long-term view. People with that long-term view uh, will want to be holding SPS for the long-term. Um, and and you know every every SPS you spend on on a Rift Watcher pack is another one that you know could then moon or at least get staking rewards or uh, apply to your validated okay. license nodes. I mean, g keep in mind there's there's going to be a lot of guys who want to apply their SPS to voting for those top is it top ten uh, paid validator node positions like the elected yep. witnesses that are you know yes. so. There's all these other different things that we might want to do with our SPS, but using it staked, if it's that or or um, unstaking it and then permanently giving it up for Rift Watchers, I think there'll definitely be an appetite for that. And there's a lot of big guys who will definitely want to have enough cards to max out their own uh, Rift Watcher deck. Yeah. And there'll be guys who want it in gold foil as well. But will it mean that? five million packs at three dollars each or three million packs at five dollars each sell out within a month <sighs> i can't see it um you know I'd, I'd say two three months probably would be would be the go because at five dollars a pack that is a decent jump yeah, um especially and, if the card the card power isn't any better than the ones that you can get from the four dollar pack well yeah and i, I mean it's just about variety right and i think that's one thing that focuses have really done for us is inspired variety um you know people are saying oh um you know i heard somebody the other day saying well this is ridiculous only half my splinters is available and then i've got an odds only match and i'm trying to get um, yeah, you know, i'm trying to get snipes 
snipes or sneaks. And yeah. I've only got like two cards that are suitable. I've got cards from Alpha and Untamed and all the rewards and Chaos Legion. And I'm drowning in sneaks that are that fit all of these criteria from this. By the time you add in neutrals or maybe dragons and then, you know, a reward card from, you know, I'm, I'm firing up a dwarven wizard who's got snipe, magic snipe and stun from the old orb. I think it's orb or dice. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. And so if you've got the depth of your playing, then yeah, great. But if you just rented a few key cards and that's what you want to play with, then you've got to accept that you're not going to get a lot of those focus points. So I think it's, it encourages what we want, which is a really deep and wide collection of cards, which is what I think everybody should be aiming for. So I'm, so, I'm a big fan of the focus. But yeah, I think that's, that's why a lot of people are going to want Rift Watchers. But whether we sell out really, really quick, I just don't see it unless SPS is really spiking and then people want to get their money's worth before the price comes back down if they're expecting it to come back down. So, yeah. Yeah. Because of where yeah, I'm so. sitting at the moment in goal one um, and where my card level's at, when I'm getting new cards, CP isn't even on, on my radar. Uh, it's like, mm -hmm. what, um, you know, like you say, it's what cards that I can actually use. Yeah. And right now I've, I've changed my focus drastically. It's been like Andrew from last week, Anubis Andrew, um, again, it's the fact the fourth time I've heard this, and yeah, you know, it's just maybe a little bit slow, but you know, knock, 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 knock. The fourth time you get up, okay, I better get up and answer the door. Um, people keep saying, "Summon us first, summon us yep. first." So, I've been, I've been thinking about that as well since that that last um, show. Uh, yeah. yeah, the same. I actually got my some of mine to level five to be able to use that second ability of my cards. Because mm -hmm. um, I've been reaching like just diamond three, and and so I've been reasonably competitive. It's always except for that first week of the season, where I swear it's yeah. like a frogger game where it's at the, at the <laughs> highest speed and I'm the frog, and I and you just get smashed, and it's just like oh my gosh, so just just wait for the traffic to pass. It, yeah, it, it's very brutal that that beginning because you, yeah. you get in with you know you roll your sleeves up ready to go straight to uh, champion this time, and you just you just get yeah. stomachs back down to the league league down. Yeah. yeah, first eleven or twelve days of the season, I tend to really struggle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so with the the summoners, um, I, I've because I'm playing a goal one, but I've only got two summoners at level six. So I've got a maxed fatty, and I've got Tyrius at level six, and everything else is holding me back at four. I, I got tasked up to five. But I went shopping today. Um, I didn't do my usual shopping on Tuesday because Hive was having a bit of a pump and I didn't particularly want to buy Hive at 91 cents. So I've been watching it for the last couple of days and it doesn't seem to want to go any lower than 58. It's been bouncing between 58 and 60. So when it hit 58, bought some Hive, bought as many tasks as I could. And I'm now two BCX short of level six for Tarsa. So I'll have my task at level six next Tuesday. And as it happens... On the, on, the, on the purchase of the task, do you buy direct with Hive or do you convert it? Um, I've been playing around with a few options. I used to like buy Hive on CoinSpot, then convert it to deck. But now, yep. uh, last couple of times, I use my uh, Revolut card to buy directly from the Splinland site, which... Uh, actually buys your hive and converts it to deck. Um, but you mentioned earlier that that fee is uh, a bit of a kicker, but I'm comparing that to the three-step process <laughs> otherwise with three people all taking a slice. And yeah. I think it pretty much works out about the same, but I bought my, my deck today from the Splitland site using the Transacts, Transacts or Transact, whatever it is. Um, and as it turns out, because I have a fire focus right now, so I was thinking, oh, I'll get my tasks to level six. One of the cards I bought, because I use Monster Market for the for the kickback in the deck, one of the cards I bought is on cooldown for 20 hours. So, <laughs> yeah. So if, so if I combine anyway, I would lose my, my level five tasks for, for the rest of the fire focus. I'd be stuck with my level four. Oh, um, hang on, it, hang on. Bob. Yeah, I, was that... gonna, I was going to say if if you have a higher level card that's not on cooldown and you combine a lower mm. level card that is, the cooldown will go away. That's true. I've, 
figured that from before, but I've had a recent experience when it didn't happen. Um, where I was, sure. mind you, it was a lower level because it was after buying chaos packs and I started buying a couple of, you know, after mm -hmm. opening my packs, I'm like two or three BSEX short for something. I'll, I'll buy them on Monster Market and I ended up the whole card combined being on cooldown. But maybe with that higher, because no, a level five and a, a bunch of ones and twos and threes, um, but I'm going to be two BSEX short anyway. So, um, yeah, no, no point in doing that. So yeah. on Tuesday, I'll have my task at six, and the next one I'll start working on is uh Kelia. And <laughs> I've also decided because I've been using Alric so much, um, I, I've got to start somewhere. I just keep looking at Alric and thinking it's just impossible to you know, it's gonna no, it's just too ridiculously expensive, but starting somewhere. Every week, I'm just going to buy one one BCX of Alric, because um, the difference between Alric and Kelia is so different. You know, melee and and the and I love that plus one, and because I want to get my Nerissa up uh, as well, where she's hitting for four rather than three, and then Alric's plus one on top of that. So my my, my to-do list is, is just growing yeah. way faster than my capabilities at the moment. But yeah, I'm definitely focusing right now on um, on summoners. I want to get all my summoners to level six so I can take advantage of my cards in gold one. Because I'm in no rush yeah. to go to, to diamond. There's no point. Uh, I mean, I can reach diamond. I've got the CP uh, to get the diamond chests. But uh, what's the point if I can't play in diamond? And especially after last season, I got 90 gold chests. So I was like pretty stoked for that. So I think I'll just I'll stay in gold one. Yeah. What's everyone else doing on the leagues? What's what's or cards? Well, my main focus is none of the rare uh, ones anymore. I'm waiting for like the rest of the. Um, um, I want. Uh, I forgot what they're sounds. called. Yeah, I want those and the Rift Watchers ones as well, the epic ones mm -hmm. to roll out. So, yeah, I can't because I have like most of them for gold three, uh, for, for, for the gold level. I was just thought to myself, why not just like not spend anything on any more cards, which, you know, I have a decent amount of, yeah, at least for the later set and just put money aside for that set instead. Yeah, and you were getting node FOMO the other day too. Right? I, st I still do. I still do. <laughs> I I'd gladly sell my SPS for a node because I I'm couldn't do just it. in the like, long run. I, hear me out. Yeah. Hear me out. In the, in the long run, I'm yeah. just going to get that all back plus more. And it's recurring. It's just going to keep happening longer <laughs> than what the even the airdrop took place for. Man, I just can't sell my SPS at... at five cents i just it just yeah. it rings so many alarm bells for me yeah but with the node you're, you're gonna you're gonna keep getting that for the foreseeable future at least right yeah but if do you if, have to set do you have to set up the node does it have to be running? absolutely okay well, let's let's but, talk do, about nodes i know nothing about them let's 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 talk about some node stuff who wants to pitch in on nodes <laughs> well i don't well, know I, the technical I've, sides I've but <laughs> I have one node license. So there's the license, which is permission to earn SPS by running a mm. node. And then there's the actual node itself, which we haven't seen. That's the software that, that they're, they're looking to make very user friendly, but you need to have your own hardware either at home running with internet and power or uh, with a, in a server farm somewhere that you're, that you're renting. Mm. And, and so not with the, the Melbourne the electricity. Will be... yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, thanks. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Crazy. Uh, we we, talking uh this next episode came out with with anubis 85 andrew who's mining dash and he was saying like where he is they're paying what do you say is he paying for i think it's 16 or 15 cent uh, yeah. uh per it's like kilowatt hour a quarter of what we're paying for for electricity it's absolutely yeah yeah I don't know if you got you would know this yet, but there's there's things they got solar panels. So if you're in a place that has sun, you can actually generate electricity from it's you know direct from the sun. That it. does help. Uh, you know that's that's another that's another option for for a lot of us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but no, the, so the the light node licenses are uh, it based on what I've heard. You don't need to actually be able to 
uh, run the node itself, you'll be able to apply your license to somebody else's node, and then he'll take some of your earnings, and then you. So wow. it's it's. I think there's a I think there's a big disconnect there between necessarily having to run one node yourself per license. Mm -hmm. Nodes will be able to stack multiple licenses on them, and then yeah. So I'm not the the fine detail hasn't yet come out, but it seems like not not being willing or able to run your own node is not necessarily a deal breaker if you want the license. Geo, yeah. I get what you're saying. I saw Neil's uh, post about it. He did a YouTube clip about um, about the tokenomics of it and basically said, hey, look, buy the node because the SPS, it gives you back. Mm -hmm. If you look at SPS you put in and SPS you pull out Absolutely. over the course of the next two years, it's, it's yeah. a no-brainer. However, there's a few things to consider. First of all, there's only a set amount of SPS that's going to come out to all of the nodes you have more right. sell, that's great for the ecosystem and the price of SPS, but keep in mind each node license holder then is going to get less SPS. Also, when that happens, say a whole lot of people buy a whole lot of node licenses, mm. the people who are still staking their SPS instead of unstaking it and, and using it to buy nodes, they're then fewer snouts in the trough sharing staking rewards. Right. Right? And you mm. that's a one-way trip. You can, you can say, oh, yeah, look, I've... I've decided to buy a license now and it might be in tranche two or three and maybe it's a bit more expensive. Yeah, once yeah. you've bought the license, you can't then say, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, go back and get staking rewards with this SPS in, in, in now because it's, mm. you've now embedded that SPS. You've locked it away in a, in a license. So all I'm saying is keep in mind when everybody's rushing this way, sometimes it's better to just hang back and say, maybe, maybe I've got better options over here. I mean, whatever superstar arrives, Real killer. Say you recruit a, a guy you know who's a real whiz bang, you know, and you're like, okay, I'm gonna back this guy with a ton of SPS, and he does really, really well, and you're the only one backing him, right? Then you're just pulling in SPS staking rewards hand over fist. The guy who's, who's through all his SPS at licenses, he's sitting there going, oh, they've delayed the software again. It's been another mm -hmm. maybe, yeah. maybe Q3 2023. I'm not, you know, and I'm not having to go. Yeah, there. yeah. Split yeah, guys. Yeah. These things. We're, we're breaking new ground here. But I'm just saying there's always another, you know, look at the other side of the, of the coin. So love the FOMO, but me personally, i got one license and I'm just, just staking my SP. Honestly, to see what happens. I don't feel like there's enough FOMO on the notes. <laughs> you're, you're making up for everyone though, Gio. No, in general, like I don't have FOMO like now because I don't actually have everything staked and unstaking yeah. takes forever. So I'm just going to wait until like i'll unstake everything and then i'll decide when it's time if it's worth it for me yeah because you always all. stake it back in one one transaction exactly. if you need to yeah exactly here's, here's a question though matt when we were looking at them um because we're looking at the nodes there i think the cheapest one at the time was two six and the next one was two seven twenty five okay two and five one, one point Geo went in tribal in Hive Engine Tribal X. Geo actually clicked on the wrong. There's license and there's SL shares. Share. And that someone mm. was there was one for like 0. 0.7 um, of a share, and it was like 50 Hive or something. Or what? What? What was that? I'm I'm not across that at all. And you know, unless it's somebody that you know and trust. I mean, Tribal Dex is decentralized, so anybody could throw anything they like up there. Uh, and say this is an official project and you know neil mcspadden does a lot of stuff and he's legit obviously but you know he did x chaos and he's doing the venari syndicate that's for approved um accredited investors in the us but anyone can throw up their own token there and so you could throw up the crustacean king token and people might buy it and they might get a good deal out of whatever it is you're trying to do or you might be ripping yeah. them off so it's very 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 caveat emptor over on tribal decks so i'm not familiar with that one yeah. Not sure what the plan is, but I, I just like to have a direct one-on-one -on -one relationship with Splinterlands. I own the assets I buy from them, or if I'm yeah. certain that it's a, a second-hand, you know, buying a beta pack or something like that, then, yeah. then I'll yeah. do it. And but otherwise, yeah, I steer clear of a lot of these other projects. And here's another uh, useful resource for the nodes. It's not just for Splinterlands. Let's say if they become a huge development company for gaming, for games, then that's going to be useful there as well. You know, that's where my mind's heading. Because I heard Agro talk about how he just doesn't want to focus on this. He wants to like broaden the horizon for 
people to come to them and be like, can you make me a game? Okay. Like on the blockchain, because they're already in, they, they know they've done it. Right. Yeah. That's, this that's entire why. ecosystem is, it's going to be huge. Right. Hmm. So when, when game developers want to want to build a web three game, yes, they're going to seek out, okay, who's got the most transactions, who's got the most daily active players, all right, they're going to find Splinterlands and they're going to say, I want to build yeah. on Hive. They're going to find Yabba and Agrode, exactly. who are incredibly helpful and have gone out of their way to build a, a big toolbox of just plug and play. Like, that, you know, if yeah. you want to be a game developer, you just come along and ask nicely. They'll say, here's everything you need to build your game on the Hive blockchain. And here's a massive player base of half a million active daily users who already have an account in your game before you've even invented it, before you've even coded it. These people already have an account in your game. Oh, and by the way, <laughs> a thousand of them are millionaires. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm. Uh, that's true. The, the humbleness of Agro is, is amazing. He, even the town hall, he knows the answer to the question he's asking his, his colleague, but he wants them to own what they're doing. And it's just amazing technique that he uses. Um, yeah. He, he, it, it just shows what, how, how much he he is in in the environment and he wants everyone else to succeed as well he's, uh, yeah, he's just I a, had fantastic. a chief when I was in the Navy one of my chiefs one thing always sticks with me he says to me never ever ask a question you don't already know the answer to <laughs> <laughs> that was his like technique but hey yeah. I ask questions because I don't I need answers I don't yeah. know but that was one thing yeah. he and said yeah and they're under the pump, you can tell, because they've got so yeah. many things they're having to work on, especially like Nate with, with his uh, creative <sighs> projects. You can get yeah. sidetracked so easily. They've got to make sure that they're working towards um, developing it in a way where it's going to be sustainable because yeah. it, it's uh, that's that's the issue that they have. They've got so many different options, you know. Um, yeah. And the inter yeah. In interlacing as well. Like when we had Cryptomancer on the show, and he was talking about like the wild modern format. He says, uh, I finished this months ago, uh, but with the new reward things coming in, it doesn't fit anymore. So I have to wait for that to finish so I can make these changes. And every time someone else does something, he has to change the code on this. So it's still good to go. Um, yeah. And all this happens in the background and, mm. uh, we get, I mean, how often with something, other projects, like let's just take, say, Windows, for example, new version of Windows, uh, we're the test pilots, we're the, the crash dummies, <laughs> like, you know, it, it doesn't work and for this is wrong, this is bugged, that's bugged. At least when something comes out on Splinterlands, it works, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's good. Or if it doesn't, they tell you it doesn't. And yeah. it needs to, yeah. well, because if you get to the point where you create um, modern and wild, you need to make sure you've got enough customer base to sustain the, enough games. And that's yeah. where maybe the, the bots are helpful in that, especially in the wild format, that you're not waiting for a minute and a half to join a game. You know, it, it comes up relatively quickly. And, yeah. and you, the level of um, game quality is, tends to be quite good. You know, you, you may smash an opponent a couple of times or you may get smashed. But the um, ranking system seems to be, I think, you know, quite challenging, except for that yeah. first couple of days where you get in yeah, the trunk. beginning of the season. But yeah. <laughs> no, no, but but the actual, but even then, like how you you've developed your strategy of developing your summoners. Now, then everyone else will start developing their summoners, and then that whole gold league becomes equivalent to a, a diamond one in a very short space of time. You know, and the level of competition will improve. You know, you see a lot of these um, the Splintlands TV uh, broadcasters from the Philippines. They're active on it a lot. They are very, mm. you know, because they're in a in a economic situation where you know getting a card is a huge difference monetarily wise, Absolutely. and your time that's being invested is well worth it. Um, and you know, and and they're thriving over there. That community, um, yeah. you know, it's just it's just fantastic the the way they do it. And yeah. uh, have you ever seen that um, Hive is Beautiful, the little bubbles? No. Do a bit. No, I don't well, think so. Um, Tara uh, mentioned it in one of his posts, and it shows you every block of Hive. And majority of them are Splinterlands. So that's how <laughs> valuable um, Splinterlands is to the Hive platform. 
Yeah. Uh, mm. If you get a chance, I'll, I'll find the link. I'll send it to yeah. you. It just, it's right. just, it just leaves little bubbles blog. that pop up every three seconds. And it's, uh, yeah, it just shows you, yeah, that it's it's just there bubbling underneath the surface, every transaction on the blockchain. It's, wow. uh, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And on the Philippines, uh, so, I, I don't know, did you catch the episode with BMO, um, who's in the Philippines? And he was really, really talking about the, you know, the hustle is, is real in the Philippines. Um, yep. And he's part of a, a Facebook community of 20,000 members where they'll do P, P2P sharing, networking. And um, this is uh, all about the bragging rights. In the Philippines, it's all about the bragging rights. Um, and with P2P, it's like, you know, you've got to know who you're dealing with. And, and they've yes. got this 20,000 yeah. strong community. It's like, yeah, it's real. Mm. Yeah. But that, then, then it makes it worthwhile to do the uh, a big meetup festival and getting t-shirts made and that type of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Where you, you yes. see them going, oh, we had a, we had a meetup of, you know, 200 people and, you know, yeah. Are you, are you still doing your catch-ups, Matt? Matt? in Adelaide? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's been pretty quiet over winter. We recently changed venues. Um, so we were at the Jade, now we're at the Duke of Brunswick. Yep. But yeah, last Thursday of the month from 6pm, uh, if anyone's uh, in Adelaide, yeah, Duke of Brunswick. And uh, yeah, so it's it's been interesting. Uh, Splinterlands TV uh, gave Hollers all the Thursday night slot, which is unfortunate, but um, he was sort of a bit of a homebody anyway, so he hasn't been coming out a great deal. But we're we're still getting sort of two, three, four, five to a meetup, um, sometimes eight or nine. Uh, I think when it gets a little bit warmer, we'll probably get a, get a few more people out. These nights in Adelaide over winter have been pretty um, pretty cold, but it's definitely worth doing um, uh, to, to just stick a flag in the ground and say, right, this is when it's going to be, and whoever rocks up, rocks up. Um, <clears throat> because then the guys who are like, oh, I've got a bit of fear, I've got a couple hundred bucks and I want to push it in. And the guys who go, oh, look, I've done really well, you know, I've spiked and I've sold at the right time, you know, uh, I, I'm doing okay and I sold some vouchers and I wouldn't mind, you know, getting a bit of cash, cash for the gas bill. Those, those transactions can, I guess, happen, right? That's not, you know, nobody's in charge of anything, but these are people that meet each other regularly and, and maybe they, maybe they transact a little bit. I mean, whose business is it? So I, I think having a regular monthly meetup where you know that those, those people are, you know, there's, there's going to be somebody there that, you know, and if it's only one or two people, then you just shoot the breeze and have a beer and, and have a chat like this, but in person. So definitely recommend, you know, uh, if anybody's of a mind to, to get something started in in Melbourne or anywhere good, you know. Um, it would be just us three. There's a so few. Got to start. Melbourne, start yeah. Everything starts somewhere. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. With that hotel, uh, drop, drop it in Discord. I'll, I'll chuck that in the link too in case someone... All right was interested yeah. in, and then skin past it. So if you're in Adelaide and you want to go to, was it first Thursday of the month, last Thursday of the last, month? Last Thursday of each month. All right. And I'll, the address will be below for yep. you. Yeah. So, so you get pub to, to put Holozor up on the screen while you're having your beer. <laughs> yeah. 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 Good idea. Yeah. That'd be sick. Get, yeah. And I mean, if you've got your, uh, your phone or something, because he streams live and you can do stuff. So... He can actually show his viewers, you guys there at the meetup. Yeah, yeah. Or well, we, we could just we have the meetup at his house while he's streaming. And <laughs> yeah, we need to bring back uh, his um, points to be able to make him exercise like he used to have oh, on yeah. his own channel. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, he had that, you know, that, that ring game. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's a, he's a good sort. I was all here, and I go way back. So yeah, yeah he's good. Yeah. Good value. You you weren't the one with him in that car tour back in Steam? Yeah. That was you, yeah. yeah that's okay. right. I yeah, remember yeah. watching. Yeah, that. we took yeah. a took a drive down the coast and just talking rubbish and yeah. Um, yeah, so we yeah, I think we we had an idea to to get really drunk one day, <laughs> just record it and then upload it while still drunk. Well, it seems like a good idea. Wonderful. And just you know see what the conversation turned out like. But um, I've, uh, I've uh, I'm off the beers for this year, just sort of trying <laughs> to be a little bit uh, a yeah. little bit a little bit I, more disciplined. But I did a video like that once. Um, Back, it was back in the DTube days um, when Kurt was over from Mexico and we there was uh, another old housemate from a previous address, Aaron. Uh, they had a, a, a local crypto meetup. So it wasn't Hive or anything specific, just general crypto. 
And I don't drink as a rule, but that night I had about four pints of Guinness and <laughs> it was in the DTube daily days of a video day. It's like, oh, sh shit, I haven't made my video today. <laughs> so I just propped the phone up on, on between a couple of glasses and made this, this video at, at the, the pub for the, for the crypto meetup. Um, actually, that was an interesting point. Something Aaron brought up when you were talking earlier with the fear mentality. Um, this was back, by the way, uh, when Bitcoin peaked at 28K Australian dollars. Um, so that bull run. And he was saying, like, you know, his friends work. Oh, so, you know, this still, you know, crypto scam type mindset type thing. Um, so if it's, if it's worth that much, why don't you cash it in for some real money? Um, uh, when when are you gonna when are you gonna cash it in for some real money? Well, while it's is, is asking them, well, uh, when are you gonna cash your fiat in for something real? Yeah, it's yeah. like, it, yeah, faith based currencies. I, I think the only thing that's holding people back at the moment, the crypto, is they just don't realize what what fiat is. Uh, they just have no idea yeah. what it actually yeah. is. Yeah. And if they did, that, that, they would be that, seriously looking. That's it's one aspect. But it's also that key analogy that Matt used, where if you lose your keys, you lose mm. you lose access um, to your wallet. Um, th that's also fearful because that's where trying to explain to people, um, it's not complicated, but you need to be careful and you need to have a a process, you know. And some people just don't like that because they'd rather have the money in their wallet and it's there; they can pull it out, or it's a bank account and. You know, and not worry. Even, even though there's bail-in laws that they don't know about, um, but mm. you know they, it, it's a lot more simpler. Whereas yeah. when you got your, your keys, where do you keep them? You know, how, how do you make sure that if you lose them, there's a lot of um, I think improvements where they're recoverable. You can get your keys back in certain circumstances. I think that's been a massive improvement. Um, but that that um, um, like for example, when I lost my SPS, I transferred it from my uh, MetaMask to the um, wallet address, not realizing you had to do it via the the process via um, Splinterlands, and so it just went into this wallet and gone. And I still don't understand how nobody knows who owns that wallet. Like, why is Splinterlands using a wallet that they have no power over, or do they? But it's too complicated. Is That's, it a was it a contract address? For a, for it was a it was when I previously transferred my SPS across. It had used that um uh, what do you call it wallet ID to transfer it to, and so what I what I'd done because it was late at night and I transferred I think five first just to make sure, and I thought it went through, but it was actually my staking reward that had come through, <laughs> and so I thought oh it went through oh that's all right bang and I sent eleven thousand SPS across. Gone, yeah. You know, ah, at the time it was about fifteen hundred dollars. Do you know like, what address? Do you know what address? Yeah, I've got it on my Meta MetaMask thing. But yeah, okay. When I went to it the uh, support like asking for yeah. what, what, you know, how do I get this back? They go, oh, you can't. And I'm like, why can't I? It, it fathoms mm. me why that's not possible, because somebody owns that wallet, and and that's my concern when Splinterlands uses third parties or. Or has a a, a certain a algorithmic process to get it through. There's yeah, a risk a there. Yeah, you like might a bridge, find, yeah. yeah, you might find that hasn't moved. I think that I think that's. Uh, I'm not an expert on Ethereum, but I believe if you there's a that when you when you're swapping, there's a yep. receiving address, and, but there's also yep. a smart contract address, which is where the contract actually lives. Yes, and if you send it, yep. money there, yep, it's gone, and that's across the board. So, yeah, but um, it, it's, it seems like that should be something that there should be a recovery yeah. of some sort. There should. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> there there yeah. should be something, but it's just yeah. ha hasn't. No, yeah. It hasn't happened yet. So I just yeah. took that as a uh, capital loss that offset my capital gains. Oh, yeah. So, I, you know, which, again, I didn't, didn't have to pay tax on my capital gains. Um, Beautiful. Um, but oh, but that, that, was, that was an amazing time when I made the capital gains because I bought um, Peercoin. You know where you mint crypto rather than uh, mining crypto, so it's, it was around the same time uh, Bitcoin got got popular. Um, and and I was just sitting one time at home, and I'm just like um, refreshing the wallet page while doing other stuff, 
And it went from like um, uh, 70 cents, it jumped up to like $1.50. And I went, but the price in, in the US is still 70 cents. But the US, the Australian dollar version was $1.50. I'm thinking this must be like arbitrage, you know? So I sold it, sold a few. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Fresh again. It's jumped up to $2.50 AUD. <laughs> It's still 70 cents on USD. Nice. I'm like, oh, I have to sell. I can't. So for that hour, it went from up to $4 in Aussie, while US was still sitting around about 70 cents. And like I, I cashed in good on that, that period there. And then after that, it went back back down to the same exchange it should have been. But it was just like a timing, yeah, a delay. arbitrage moment. A delay. Yeah, just yeah. Having, I, was, I was having a beer refreshing. Oh. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And then that gave me my capital gain, but that was all going going on like, oh man, I've pay tax on that now. And I'm like, oh, then this thing happened with SPS. Because the way I, I, I think with the ATO is if I bought something purely for investment and I sell it, I'll pay capital gains on it. But if it's something that I bought purely out of a hobby interest or um uh is just for fun, I don't think I should be paying capital gains tax if I happen to make a gain on that, because all of the losses I've had and all that, I never kept records of when you're playing around with your hive or your steam it or those things. Cause I was in it purely for the social media side of it. And, and so that was my, that's how, I, anyway, cause I've got an accounting background. So for me, I want to give the tax department what I think they deserve because I don't want them knocking on my door because then you're always getting, you you become a perennial client of theirs. Um, yeah. So yeah. So anyway. So things like that, where um, we we started with Steam in the first days, where it was very, very rough and you know needed a lot of improvement. To now, it's come a real long way. That it's I think it's very accessible to norm, normal people, the ones that are, that just go. I've got a thousand dollars. I don't want to put it in the bank. I don't want to buy shares. You you think crypto is good? I go yes. I think a thousand dollars to learn. So long as you can, you can you know accept the ups and downs. I said, go for it. There's as long as you stay down. away from ETH. Yeah. Who is ETH? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ethereum. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Well, that, yeah. that was the young guy when he was seeing me make profits. He bought three Ethereum. <laughs> he goes, yeah. it's got a moon. It's got a moon. I'm going, mate. Ah, uh, it's not one of my coins. I don't. I don't. I don't quite like uh. it. I put um, MetaMask yeah. on my browser when MetaMask first came out and it was like the cool thing to have. And then yeah, I discovered now. gas fees and yes. I've never used it since. It's not yeah, poor people not interested friendly. interested in it. It's not yeah, poor true. people friendly, man. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. well that's what, again, another, another benefit of Hive. You know, it's, uh, yeah. 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 I think one of you guys mentioned it last week or whenever. Yeah, imagine yeah. the gas fees on just having a, a battle on Splinterlands. No one could do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no. It's true. No, it, it, these, again, there's so many. The only thing I don't like about DEC is that it's it's Tron backed, right? Or it's Tron it's Tron contracted? Dark Energy think, Crystals? Yeah. No, no, I don't think so. They're, they're Not anymore? Okay. So they, so I, read, yeah. I read somewhere it, it was went, um, went to that. Tron contract. Um, you can you can buy with with Tron, okay. And I believe there was a there was a seed germinator program with with Tron uh, or an offshoot of Tron. I didn't really follow it well, uh, but um, yeah, you, it's it's acceptable. But no, Duck Energy Crystals just live in in Splinterlands. I'm not entirely yeah. sure that they're on chain. Are they on chain or are they just on the on the Splinterland server? I'm I'm sure they would be on chain. But uh, yeah, yeah, they're, they're not on Tron. They would have Sorry. to be to be on Hive Engine or Tribalex, wouldn't they? Well, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. to be on to be on Tribal Dex, to be export. I'm I'm thinking until you export them, but they, then they live inside the Steam Monsters account in Hive Engine. So yeah, that would make yeah that would make sense. So they are and, a, a, and, a actual and token. The, the last thing on the whale versus minnow is the land. You've touched on that. That you've got re probably regions. You have you have a whole continent yet. You'd be close yeah, to it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, pretty pretty much. Yeah, no, no. I've got two regions and uh, another hundred or so plots. Yeah. So, so I'll, that's another one where that's a whale type thing. Do you think there's an opportunity for minnows to help on the land, like be the surfs? I would, I would pat. I mean, especially you guys from Melbourne, I would pat you down thoroughly. <laughs> yeah. um, 
I'd need vetting. I'd need I'd need some sort of references from you know somebody trustworthy to say, look, I know they're from Melbourne, but you know uh, they're they're probably okay. Um, <laughs> I'll bring my hoe and my tilling tilling equipment. <laughs> Yeah. Ah, yeah. oh, when you said you're being your hoe, I wasn't thinking gardening. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, it's look, it's it's TBD. Who knows? A lot of people are saying okay. castles might be marketplaces that people congregate. Mm. Uh, that's a bit difficult if if you own the whole region and it's just a castle in the middle of it, and you're like, uh, hey, you know, we, people have to travel hundred blocks to you know hundred plots yeah. just to get into the you know, uh, but and, it, it's too, it's too, everything's TBD. And it's complexity of the software as well, yeah? The, the, you know, how many interactions yep. there are. Um, yep. Because I, I was thinking like um, Venari, was it the Smith one? You know, cards like that, I never play Smith. those cards. Yeah. I never play those cards and I often think maybe I should just get rid of them. But then I'm thinking they could apply really well on onto a land situation where they're making items. Yep. So, you know, there's all these characters that are particularly the Venari <clears throat> species and the Goblin species. They're all known for their tinkering or their their crafting. Uh, crafting, yeah. And would they be more uh, more buffed on a land? Do you think? Or? It, it's it's hard to know. I imagine it will probably be yeah. um, a, a, a splinter based. So uh, Earth Splinters will probably do better. Earth Splinter cards will probably do better on these particular type of plots and death. You know, um, fire at a volcano that type of. If you're on a vo of volcanic or lava sort of area then your fire cards will probably do better but again it's it's all speculation it's fun to think about and i'll be on bribro's land stream tomorrow but by the time this episode comes out that'll already have been done so uh, there might be a recording around but um uh just to chat more about land but it is it's so much as tbd I, well i'm i'm probably going to retire from battling i keep saying this and thinking maybe i will maybe i won't but I likely need all my cards on my land, so if that's the case, then I'll just switch to playing as a as a landholder and not as a as an at as an actual battle monkey. Oh well, so it's going to be you think that um, that expansive that you need. Well, yeah, I mean, if it if it takes constant you know uh, supervision and upkeep, then yeah, and it you know most of my cards I have I play with. Um, and so I do have quite a lot that I rent out, but I would probably just say, look, I'm uh, if I'm if I'm going to be playing and and you know trying to work my land, I'm going to run out of cards. I'm going to have to rent out land to people or rent cards from people. Might be easier to just say, oh, just hang up my battling boots for a while at least, and and just work land. Yeah. Can we wow. just backstep yeah. a little bit there to this Venari phobia? Um, I love my Venaris. Like what's <laughs> <laughs> like the wave? No, I like with, I like bone. The, I love Bone Smith. He's yeah. he's awesome. Yeah. 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 Crystal yeah. Smith got Tank Heal, and the yep. Seed Smith. Um, okay, Seed Smith is range poison and leech. Yes. Uh, yeah. 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 Scavenge, isn't it? I don't know. Yeah, I, don't know. No, I, yeah, I reckon it's scavenge. It probably is scavenge. Okay. I use him. I've I've been trialing. Um, <laughs> Uh, multi scavenge teams. When yeah, there's going to be a, a big, yeah, like so four fun. scavengers in one team for, for yeah, oh, and that's about the depth of your, you know. Yes. And so it doesn't matter who dies, it everybody else on the team gets strong. Yeah. And yeah. so when when it's say noxious fumes or something like that, and you're getting a high rapid death count, mm -hmm. um, people are dying all over the shop, and every round it's like, oh, he died. And then there's you know, scavenge, 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 scavenge. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good luck taking all them down because everybody gets stronger. So, yeah, multi scavenge is, is I'm having, having a lot of fun with that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. And on, on that, um, time we get some, some final words in. We're actually uh, at the end of the, the Zoom timer. That's um, yeah. I, tell me about it. Yeah. Um, just want to put out there to the viewers we actually have a pack, Chaos Legion pack giveaway. Yeah. On this episode, we have a pack which has been donated to us from one of our fans. So we've got a bit of a competition to win a Chaos Legion pack. So I'm going to bring up the screen here. And as you can see, it's an a even battle. We've got two Tarsas, equal leveled, but two very different teams. All we need you to do is in the comment section, tell us who wins and why you think they're going to win. The names have been blotted out. It's just got one and two. 
but I have saved the original link so we can validate the winner. So if you have a look at this battle, just from the, the screenshot, guess who's going to win and why, and the winner will receive a Chaos Legion pack. And on that also with the commenting, I do reply to every single comment. We love engagement on the posts and each week one viewer will receive 10% of the post rewards for the comment that gets the most engagement. And my engagement, I don't just drop a post saying, hey, you know, great show, that's not engagement. We, I do reply, reply back, say something that people are gonna to reply to, it's engagement and you win 10% cool chat, bro. post rewards. And if you wanna be on the show, drop a comment below. Any wrap ups? Oh, we've got less than a minute. Uh, anything quick uh from anyone? Can we get can we get Jagged back, please? He's been a great yes, guest. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You've been yep. excellent. Yeah. Yeah. We, have, we, have, we have to have a battle as well next time. Yes, yeah, I know. Sure. We, yeah. it, time just flew. Time just flew. We'll get you on I real forgot. soon. If you're I down forgot for we that, even did that. Yeah. If you're down for that, we'll get you on real soon. All right. And we still gotta cover we still gotta cover guilds. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, so thanks for joining us on episode 32. Look forward to seeing you on episode 33. I'm Bob that's, that's my house yeah. number as well, so that's good. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, that's uh, conspiracy shit too, number 33. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Peace out. All right, you catch you guys.